Welcome back to OmniFactory. Today, I think it's time for us to look at a new storage system. I had lots of comments last episode, basically people saying if you want auto crafting, you don't have to wait through the entire tab that is this, <laughs> get to get through all of that, then you can get into logistics pipes, which is in the pack. So I thought we'd give that a go. Yep, it's time to go old school. So where do we start? Well, I decided I thought I would start with the distillery, thinking, hey, distillery, we could just get this wood gas we made last episode, or wood tar in this case, I just re uh, repurposed it to make tar, into the next thing, and uh, that being fennel. But we can't do that. Nope, because this requires 64 EU per tick, and you can't supply that on low voltage. So we're stuck until we get to medium voltage. And that's not far away. We could go and craft a medium voltage machine hole and get further into that. However, my more immediate concern is off camera, I'm taking longer and longer to have to go make all this kind of stuff over here, even though it's in work tables. And I don't like that. I want an ability, if you're following along, certainly, for you to be able to do things without having all that extra time. So, uh, Logistics Pipes has its own auto crafting system, and again, thanks to all the commenters who did say that is available, and it technically will be available before we get A2's auto crafting because of that extra burden in this pack. Oh, I say burden, extra complexity in this pack. Let's put it that way. So, we need to start out with the basics of Logistics Pipes, and it's been a while, so I need to do a little bit of research. But um, yeah, well, let's just take a look at these. There aren't uh, that many things in logistics pipes um you know it's only a small amount of the screen full there but there are a few things we need to actually start with um where should we start let's start with power you do need power for logistics pipes and you use the logistics power junction for that but as you can see the recipe is fairly simple we've got most of this stuff already red alloy plate is about the only thing we'll actually need to craft and probably got some tin cables somewhere so we can go and craft that we're also going to need a few other things, in particular pipes. Now, there's there's a couple of varieties you'll need by default, and then we'll get into to further things later. The th things you need by default are unrooted or unrouted, if you're American. Oops, if I can spell. <laughs> unrouted transport pipe. You're going to need lots of these. So you get eight for four wrought iron plates. Pretty good. Nice deal. Don't mind that too much. And that means I should probably just make some wrought iron. Do I have enough? Yeah, let me just put this, these 30 through our furnace and get those cooking. While that's being done, note that the, this kind of pipe is only for runs that have no intersections. So if you pick any piece of any block, if there are two pipes coming out of that block, you're fine. You can use unrooted. If there are three i.e. Or, or four, anything above two, uh, it's an intersection and you need to use the next pipe up basic logistics pipe. The reason being the unrouted, unrouted, I'll stay with unrouted, I'm, I'm sure the Americans will complain, but sorry, it's just my accent. The basic logistics pipe uh, is, is more intelligent, basically. The unrouted version, <laughs> get it right, uh, will just send things in a random direction. If you hit, like, if it comes in this way and hits a junction, it'll decide to just go that way or that way. And maybe sometimes you want that. Not so much for most cases, however, you probably want them to go in specific ways. So you want to then craft the next tier up, so the basic logistics pipe. Now that takes the unrooted transport pipe, thankfully. And there you see, doesn't root stuff, can't access inventories, and serves for the transport of items only. So it's just basically your stuff that items flow along. When you add an FPGA to that, uh, you'll get the basic logistics pipe. Now the FPGA is just a smelted raw FPGA, which requires stuff that we, oh well, it's certainly a custom recipe. You don't get this in a normal pack with logistics pipe. So to do that, we're gonna need some silicon dust. And we're gonna need some gold foil diamond and red alloy wire. So it looks, uh, again, I'm going to need some red alloy, doesn't it? So that is something I should find. And it's just going to be copper and redstone. So redstone should be, we can actually just grab out of our AE system. It's absolutely fine, by the way, that we're going to have, you know, multiple storage systems. You can connect your AE2 system to logistics pipes, but it requires, um, it requires a couple of different types of pipes that we're not going to have initially, if I remember rightly. Um, and I'll show you how to do it once we need to do it. For now, remember, I'm not storing a huge amount of stuff in here. So it's not, it's not terribly important right now. 
but um, you know later it could do so you could disconnect this for the moment uh, you can use power of any different kind i think you can use rf or eu power to power logistics pipes so that won't be much of a problem either let me just see do i have any more copper i'm not going to have much more copper i'll just make what i can out of my remaining before i buy some more or go and mine some more that will do uh, one other note, this pack now is on version 1.1.0 and it has changed a few things. One, the Omnicoins have changed. There are multiple tiers of them now. Uh, you, the ones that you had, the Omnicoins, are now called Omni Pennies. And uh, don't worry, the, <laughs> things haven't uh, been devalued. You can still buy stuff with, it um, seems, Omni Pennies. So the same you, you could buy before, you can buy now. So that's still available. However, there is apparently another way to get ores. Uh, that you don't need this tab anymore, but uh, I'll need to go and investigate the patch notes for that in a little while. So, red alloy should be coming out. And we got, yeah, we got 12. What I also did, and um, I'll just pop upstairs, is you need to prepare an area with logistics pipes, and that area needs to be large, because logistics pipes is one of those mods that requires um, lots of space. Um, particularly when you get to auto crafting, to be able to do that, it requires sort of like two block space for each auto crafting setup. So, yeah, you're going to want space. And in my case, I'm also going to want because we we're not just going to use A to to start with. I'm also going to want space for chests or their equivalent. And uh, I think we'll just be able to use crates. Um, I've used those before; they're quite nice. We just need to make four chests, wooden casing, which is just again some wood and uh, in various forms and you're fine so then you can line up those crates you know in here i've just made a connection connecting area between the two buildings and i haven't filled in the side yet etc but um yeah then we can have whatever we need to in here for example like auto crafting and then there's a route through to this building and we've got some stuff in this chest i didn't pick up before okay that'll do for now so yeah we're going to end up with a complex of different rooms and we're going to need pipes to do that so let me just go and craft a few of those basic pipes and then we'll get started with connecting everything up now the main thing with the power that you're going to need to create is uh, let me just go back to logistics you only should only need one of these power junctions so you shouldn't need more than that to get this going so just one of those will do only one slight wrinkle with this plan um and ever so slight is that you need a new machine a machine we've not done before, which is this cluster mill, and that is straightforward with six motors. Yes, six. And let's put it over here. I previously had the, um, oh, what was it here? It was uh, not the distillery because that was new. Uh, the other machine I had out here, I just moved it because it's going to be needed out here. Yeah, basic chemical reactor. Um, so I just moved that out unless it should take its place. So with that, we can just take these two gold plates and then put them through the cluster mill. And that should produce gold foil, hopefully. Now, once that's done, we should then have everything we need to craft the FPGAs, which we can then cook up. I've already made 40 unrooted transport pipe, and we'll get the logistics power junction here. Uh, remember, I have some power in RF form going all the way over here. So I think what I'm gonna, just going to do here with this is, first of all, put up some light. And I'm not sure if they only just added dynamic lights, but I think they have. Uh, anyway that is pretty good and let's just get this down here just so that i can get access to this area while everything's going and in here we will uh, put down our logistics power junction so let's just pop you down there and you're filling up with rf power and it has a huge buffer 2 million lp so that could be drawing off uh, quite a lot of power from here yep <laughs> <laughs> this only has a 60,000 hour buffer, so it will be using lava. And at some point soon, that lava is going to start running out because I've not moved it across to the nether yet. It still is consuming that lava lake just below us. Well, about 30 blocks below us and about 30 blocks that way. And, uh, you know, so I do have to watch out for that power consumption. However, this then is the start of our network and it will supply anything connected to it with power. So you don't need to worry about any kind of other power junction as far as this is concerned. So let's have a look. There's some gold foil. And let's just put this through here. And we should get two batches of FPGAs. And let's put those in here. Get some of that conduit binder back out because I was using that to, to make some stuff. So let's just put that back in, in here. There we go. And then we should be able to use this to convert over some of our unrooted transport pipe into 
basic logistics pipe. Now, what used to happen is you used to have to just get out, grab something like a crescent hammer or any other wrench that's compatible, and you used to be able to use the basic logistics pipe to be able to access it, put it down. Um, yep, that's a, that looks like a new model. Looks like a much newer model. Yep, and you used to be able to basically set this up. Now, what is going on here? Uh, let me just get that away for a second. And it's got nice animation. Whoever's been doing that work, is it, that's pretty nice. Well done, my developer. Anyway, what you do with basic logistics pipes is connect them to machines or storage. So, for example, if I just use unrooted transport pipe, it can't connect to any storage or machines. It's just there purely for transport of items. So when we have basic logistics pipe, if we want to see what's inside something, and I'm not sure if I've got a crate. Why don't we craft a crate or two? Uh, I have some wood in my inventory, so let's just convert some of that over. Um, I'm going to need about eight of this. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll convert those back into chests. And then what else did we need for a crate? Was it just the wood casing, which is some wood, some planks, etc. So um, I'm just going to make a couple of casings. And there we go. We'll just use those, convert them to sticks, and then we should be able to just shift click that in. Uh, what I thought it would have taken four more. Did I not have four extra? I don't think I did. Uh, let's just convert a couple more over. One, two. There we go. And now we let me shift click that in. You will. So two wood casings. And then we just need some planks and we just have a small storage crate. This will do for now. So if you want to access this from the rest of our network, we need to be able to basically connect to it. To connect to it, you just connect it with a basic logistics pipe like that, hopefully. There we go. And you'll see it's got a nice connected texture. This is much nicer than the 1.7 version as far as how these pipes look. With that, you can then basically, or you, the first thing you need to do is choose a default route. So if I shift right click here and select this as default route, if, if something can't go anywhere else, it's going to come here. If something is set up elsewhere, then it'll go there. But if we just have like a dump chest where we just go after adventuring somewhere and drop it in and it goes into the network, unless you have it specified somewhere, it will go here. Otherwise, it might go in another storage or it might just get dumped onto the floor somewhere so make sure you always have a default root set now when you craft your power junction for the first time you will get a guidebook uh is this still in my inventory and i crafted another one so <laughs> it's just a basic piece of uh, unrooted uh, pipe and a book so it's nothing special and yes uh, thanks thanks for playing logistics pipe lots of changes have been made since the last release in 1.7 Okay, so next page, and it's basically saying you need to craft some other modules. So logistics programmer, logistics program compiler, and also a logistics disk. So let's take a look at what they need to actually uh, to be crafted. So logistics uh, programmer, programmer, program compiler, uh, which needs a logistics disk by itself, um, machine holes, some lapis, some tin, red alloy plates. So logistics disk does not take much whatsoever. So we're going to need two of those, presumably, and a logistics programmer. And that requires a FPGA, which we've already got. Blank module, which we're going to need more of over time. So that needs paper, which of course we'll be able to get quite easily now that we have our sugarcane farm. And rest on gold nuggets and advanced chip. Now, what does the advanced chip need? It just needs a raw basic chip, which is some silicon, some copper wire, and some redstone. Fine. So we should make sure we get some more copper because I was running out. Uh, let me just grab a few of the Omni pennies and we'll go and trade those in just by this existing screen. I've not looked into the new way of doing this yet just to get 32 and we'll just cook that up and have that running for us. So we can just put these away and there we go. So, right, I need to go and craft those items. I've showed you the recipe, so I'll do the ref off camera so we can get more in the episode. And with all that crafting done, we should be able to get this going placed. So if I just go and let's say I put it down right about here, uh, where's my block? There's the program compiler. And if we put it in here, we should be able to put a disk in. And there we go. We can choose basic. And I think we're going to hit unlock. No power, connect to LP network. Good. 
and that just means that I just need to put a basic logistics pipe in and then why don't I put a basic logistics pipe there as well I'm not sure if we need a basic one for the power but uh, it'll do for now and now we should well it says no power but this is connected yes that's connected hmm sometimes I have problems with this kind of thing so let's just uh let's just see oh wait a second it just delayed yep yeah. now it's got green lights are you not connected no you're still saying not connected uh either that's delayed or it's some kind of problem maybe it can't deal with the top of this block uh why don't we just go by the sides then so let's just get rid of that for a second and let's just go through the because we're going to hide the pipes in the walls anyway so we may as well do that so let's just connect this so basic logistics pipe and another one there now will you say that you will go nope you're still not having any any of this hmm okay i guess that will just break you and replace you and hopefully you will actually work the second time let's get this down and try again uh where's my there it is okay are you now connected you are now connected so just breaking and replacing it with the pipe already there seems to work fine okay so that will start to process the basic tier now if you remember 1.7 logistics pipes basically what used to happen is you used to have the system whereby um you had um well forget the name of them exactly but i think they were called logistics chassis let's just have a look see if that's still the case chassis yeah they're still there mark one mark two mark three mark four etc and then there are also modules so the modules uh are they still called modules i hope they are yep different kind of modules now there used to be mark two and mark three versions of all the modules and they aren't there anymore it seems that this this entire system has replaced them you used to get the, the basic ones and then you regretted it because they were so slow um like one every five seconds or so in certain cases so yeah the upgrade system is there as part of this so we have it available now hopefully we'll see what that comes up as soon as this finishes so while that's going on we're going to need a few things uh first of all i'm going to need to move this pipe into the wall but uh why don't we just do that like this and we just get rid of you and i wish you put this put this back down and there we go and now can i set you as the default roots yes so in and when anything else goes wrong we can also get items back here and it looks pretty nice we've got uh, no issues with the floor being taken up fine now i need to get to the crafting the next step so on the right hand side here now now that comp completion is finished we can choose and um basically um if you like a template or a recipe for our items and we can flash it onto the programmer now i've already loaded it with a particular sort of um, program to craft this the provider logistics pipe and for now i'm just going to put it uh here i'll explain what it does in a little bit but uh, let's just put it in and i just want to uh just basically destroy that for a second destroy that and then let's just put an unrooted transport pipe right there okay and we'll just put the walls back okay and again unrooted there and there i think and yeah we'll leave that alone for now and don't worry about it what it does so in here we're going to look for something that we need to uh, to expand this network and the next thing we actually need is to be able to pull items out of it i.e to us personally so to do that we're going to need a requester of some kind now there is a logistic chassis and you can then add lots of modules into it okay and each module has an equivalent pipe so if you want an item that is just easy to craft in one go but isn't upgradable go for the pipe if you want lots of different stuff attached into one thing use a chassis and then you can attach lots of modules that are the equivalent to the pipe hopefully that's easy for you to understand if it's not put the comments in the comments down below and i can answer the questions from there however in here we're going to want to look you see i already got this one in green provide a logistics pipe that's the actual item over there what we're actually going to want is the request logistics pipe and compile that that's going to take a few seconds to compile and once it is it'll go green on that list on the right hand side at which point you can load it onto your programmer 
Now, um, we want the request logistics pipe here. So I think I already have much, if not all, of the stuff we need for that. So if I just flash this onto the programmer, uh, press flash, and it'll load it onto here. And this then becomes the same as the um, programmable circuit in Greg Tech. So we can take that over from there. I just do a regular crafting grid and request logistics pipe. Shift click in, basic chip is just uh, the raw basic chip, but in a furnace. And we should get this request logistics pipe and we can get the, the programmer back. Now, again, for the upgraded version, you're going to want to put, make this in a module form and then plug it into a chassis. But for now, just to get started, we'll put that here. So one log request logistics pipe, one provider logistics pipe. And this may make sense now. So if I right click on here, you'll see I can request items. And if it looks somewhat similar to something like this, that's no accident. This thing is your interface to however many storage things you have in your network. So if I just put in, let's say, I don't know, some tin, some copper, iron, gold, etc., and have a look in here, you can see I can see all of those things. More importantly, I can request them. Now, this isn't the same thing as an inventory system. You can't just um, basically dump them into your inventory instantly. You have to request them. Now, this is where the speed of things comes into, into the, um, I think, well, becomes important because these, these pipes are sort of like the basic versions of things. They tend to be a little bit slow, but there's only about four or five sections of pipe here for, for me to actually do things. So let's say I want the, those gold ingots, please. And I want one. Uh, yep. And it popped out for me. So it pops straight out of this pipe, straight into my inventory. I can't really put it straight back in again. It doesn't let me access my inventory. Uh, what, however, you know, we can just dump it straight back into our dump chest. So this is sort of like a, a well, it is a requester. I've seen them put into ceilings before where they just dump whatever you request back out and they'll go and find items. It'll take a little while, but you can then just queue up requests. And, but otherwise you can still access it just like an AE2 system. It's just a bit slower. Now what that doesn't do is any auto crafting, but this is just the first stage, you remember, we're getting the, the actual system set up. So at this point, all you really need to do is have a provider logistics pipe connected. We just right click on with us with a crescent hammer. We can um, we can limit this, sort of get it into a different um, modes. And you can see here what it's actually doing is basically to stop us from emptying inventory. That's quite important because you can use logistics pipe in a really advanced modes. Uh, you can do things like say this chest, everything that matches stuff in this chest should still go into this chest. So you just put into that chest, whatever you want. And if you get any duplicates, it goes into that chest. More importantly, that means if you use the provider module or the provider pipe, you can set it so that it never removes everything from that chest and wipes out those kind of settings, if you like, that you've created by dumping stuff in. For now, this is the dump chest, so it can just be left as normal. And then you can just change this between whitelist and blacklist. Generally, you can just create provider logistics pipes and not worry about it too much. You can connect them to um, pretty much every chest or crate that you have. Now, between the episodes, I'm going to go and create lots more crates, I think, because these have a lot of storage in them and we can get rid of all these crates. Uh, the only thing is where we'll put them, because the further away I put them, the longer it's going to take to actually get them to to be supplied and of course i'll need to route the cable as well so what i was thinking was maybe route the cable behind the wall and then up through this pillar uh, ish or outside whichever and then up onto this floor um and over here or something like that and then we can just have crates along the floor we'll run the cable just underneath them and out here and then down back to the basement again so i'm going to need a lot of uh a lot of pipe, but that I have 27 anyway of the unrooted kind. I only need the basic kind once I get um, to junctions. So that's not too bad. Right, where do we go from here? Now, while I'm not quite sure where they are in the research tree for this, which is why I'm trying to research tier three at the moment, there are upgrades from even this. The first one to note is the remote orderer. This is really, really handy ish. And I'll show you why. There's two pieces to it. The remote order logistics pipe, which is just like this, except that it interacts with the remote order. The remote order is like having a um, an A2 uh, remote crafting terminal. 
So you can, well, not crafting terminal, but remote terminal. You can basically request items and with your remote order from wherever you are across dimensions. It takes power every time you open it, so be a bit careful. Uh, however, when it doesn't take any power to actually order the items or anything, just when you open it. Um, yes, so you can order them and they'll be delivered to your remote order logistics pipe. Now that doesn't help because that's not moving anywhere, remember. However, you can just connect it to an ender chest and that's what I've done in previous series when I use this back in 1.7. You have this into an ender chest and an ender patch to the ender chest so you can basically right click, use your remote orderer and get stuff to pop back into the ender chest which is in your inventory wherever you are really handy way of doing things and that is one of a couple of different uh, upgrades from here and do we actually see are you finished you're nearly finished okay we'll see how that goes and let's just see is there also logistics uh, logistics request table table yes so this is basically more like the a2 terminal now there's a2 crafting terminal which i don't have yet and that will basically be the equivalent for logistics. So if we go for here, um, unfortunately, this requires a bit more stuff. Um, yeah, so blank scanner modules, we can make that. That's not a problem. Crafting logistics pipe, LV machine holes, <laughs> request logistics pipe mark two. Uh, we, yeah, we can actually make most of this stuff. Ooh, small steel gears, compressed crafting tables. Interesting. So yeah, this is lots of stuff that we haven't got to yet. It's not out of our, out of the ballpark, so we can make all this. It's just a little bit laborious. But yeah, that is basically like this, but upgraded to include um, a crafting table. So you can shift click stuff into it and it'll pull stuff from your network. So I'll be crafting one of those as well. I think I may do it between the episodes because that just takes a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Here we are. So we've got tier three done. So tier two is available. Presumably it's reverse ordered. Is we do we have anything in here that's new? Crafting logistics firewall pipe. That's new. I don't remember that. Okay, we're gonna have to look at some of this stuff. Uh, passive supplier. You can see lots of this stuff. We're gonna have to just go through all of these. Uh, I'm not gonna show them sequentially. I'm just gonna show them as I actually build the system up. We're gonna start with just a storage system. Then we're gonna add auto crafting. And then, uh, well, auto crafting machines with machines and then auto crafting in general, maybe. Um, but we'll need to do those in a probably dedicated episode. They take a little bit of explaining just to get everything working. Also, if anyone knows in the comments before I record the next episode, do Greg Tech Machines have an auto eject? Is this an auto eject? Because if it is an auto eject, that will really help. Uh, otherwise, I may have to specify manually a side to eject from and then have some weird logistics pipes setups. Um, anything that also ejects like thermal expansion machines, on the other hand, it's kind of easy to set up. So if anyone wants to let me know in the comments, otherwise I'll just take a look around and try it before we get to the next episode. So is there anything in here that I really want yet? Passive supplier provider? No, 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 no. Okay, so we'll just set it going on the next tier of research. And how are you doing with power? 1.5 out of 2 million. Have we run out of lava yet? No, we haven't. And that's running constantly. Good. So we've got our system running. Between the episodes, I'm going to be putting the crates together, moving them upstairs, and then just attaching these provider logistics pipes. I may even go with the module form. So we have like a blank module, uh, this. And we can use that blank module along with all the other different kinds of things to basically, uh, is, what, what is it, uh, is it called? just called provider? Yeah, so just to craft the provider module. There we go. And that's simple as well. In fact, let me just craft, uh, let me just craft one of those and I'll just show you their installation just so it's easy enough to understand. So there's logistics chassis mark one. We flashed over and then we can go and craft this in. I think what I'm just going to do is just craft lots of these logistics programmers, to be honest. Uh, what did it take again? Yeah, you see, they're not all that expensive. I think what I would be doing for auto crafting these things is just crafting one of each and then just loading it in. There's, there's no real need, I don't think, to keep on reflashing the same one. So that will let us craft logistics chassis mark one. And let's make... Um, Let's make another one of those. I've not got many more basic logistics pipes. And then we'll just go and craft a provider module. So let's just, uh, wish you could shift click that in. Provider module, where are you? Um, and the scroll wheel on the mouse does not work very well with this. So provider, provider module, there we go. 
compile and then we'll flash that across build the same thing and uh, we should be good so provider module do i need anything that we don't already have mm, i've pretty much got everything there yep just need to wait for that to finish and now i've got the mark ii version of the chassis just so that we can add multiple modules rather than just a single which is no different than a pipe i don't believe uh let me just grab where's the basic well let me just put these raw basic chips in just a few of them that'll do and we should both just shift click that in now for two of these uh what am i missing i am missing nothing can i just shift click another one in whoops not tier two yeah there we go so there's two of them let's go and replace this one just in case i actually want to well just use this as a demonstration and let's put you in here so logistics chassis mark two to help if i get back ah. Ah. okay there we go and then i should be able to install modules in here so in this case a provider module and can we select yeah we can just go straight to the options there if we want to and you'll see you'll have another space available for another module if i want to so that is going to work perfectly well and i'll leave that one there just as an example but uh, most of the time you can just start off with a default pipe if you want to i'm just going to want to upgrade them at some point soon so we're going to need to continue into next episode with lots more stuff including all the auto crafting stuff if you've got any specific questions about anything you've seen particularly to do with logistics pipes let me know down in the comments particularly if there's anything you want me to run through that you're not clear on uh, do let me know and i'm happy to actually run through that hopefully you've got everything set up that you can just connect all of your crates now or all of any storage system for example you can connect uh, storage raw controllers oh and just one other thing as you know um, i did mention that you can connect your a2 system uh, if you want to connect your a2 system already then just craft an interface for me to put it right here for instance and then just put a provider uh, sorry a, yeah a um yeah provider logistics pipe or you can put one of these chassis in there as well doesn't much matter connect to it and then that will be able to see everything inside your a2 system and pull out of it that won't however <laughs> put stuff back into your a2 system uh without some other stuff being put in so uh while we haven't really talked about it too much in this episode uh we will talk about that later and uh i don't think it'll actually work actually yeah i'll need to actually go and uh, figure that out but you can certainly pull stuff out of your a2 system if you want to use it rather than lots of crates i quite like the idea of lots of crates it doesn't take any power i can shut this a2 system down until we have uh, both medium voltage available and auto crafting or at least the prerequisites for it you know the the chemicals plastics ready for it so in the meantime we can just expand using um using logistics pipes oh one last thing you don't just need space for all your crates you'll need space for all the crafting setup as well that will generally occupy a hall of its own the two block spaces so this and then this for every single uh, thing you want to be auto crafted so, or even three tall if you have like a separate power supply because you're going to be putting a pipe on top of machines possibly just behind them as well if they don't auto eject uh, i think you can do that with chassis but uh, we'll, we'll go back to that uh, next episode so yes if you've got any questions put it in the comments below feel free to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the episode and hopefully you get on with building your own logistics pipe system and we'll see you next time for some more omnifactory as always guys thanks for watching